So after a while of coding, we now have our file and rank from the touch of the user. But what is the point of a board without any pieces? Here we'll have the black pawns populated throughout the board so that we're able to display it to the user. So now that we have the display of the pieces themselves, we're now able to integrate all of the other pieces, including the knight, bishop, rook, queen, king, and then the pawn. Now that all of these pieces are fully implemented, we could access them polymorphically and then display them on the application. However, we're definitely gonna have some problems with rendering and displaying images of the pieces. Yeah, and then it does look like we're having some problems here when I'm accessing the images and having them render. But using my debugger, I'm able to locate the bug. And finally, I have rendered the pieces onto the board, but I'm not rendering yet the pawns. Looking at the squares though, we're able to locate the ranks of each of the squares, which would be the rows of the grid. As you can see, that is a rank and that is a file. That terminology is usually used as like E4, A1, all of that. But now we have the pawns rendered. There is no point though to just have the pieces rendered. Now it is time to actually move these pieces. Here I've discovered the capabilities of this dot invalidate and look at this. I'm moving the pawn wherever I can. One issue though, you can't move the pawn wherever you can. Here I'm validating the pieces by using the methods of can validate or can move of the pieces so such as the knight can move in l shapes and the queen can move in diagonals i would constantly be conditionally checking whether or not the pieces could move so great we have the ability to move but now i want to be able to alternate between the players so black and white and i also want to be able to undo so here i have the board view and up top i have the buttons which access the board view from a global event listener Oh wait, looks like I've stumbled upon a problem of the undo feature. Simple fix, however, I was not storing the returned piece when undoing the button. So here we can see it works finally. And when I'm playing against black, I'm able to do that. But for some reason, my pawns don't work and I need the ability to debug and see the available moves of the pawn. So I'm able to predict where each piece is going and the available moves to that player. So with the rook, I'm able to see horizontal and vertical. And with the queen, I'm able to see where I'm able to go using those icons on the squares themselves. And you may have been noticing on the dashboard a little button. What that button does is randomizes a move for the player to choose. And you can see on that picture, it's a familiar face. I don't want to spoil anything, but it kind of sounds like this. Okay, so after a long game, we want to be able to save the chess game. And right here, I'm able to play a game, randomize the moves. And once I click end game, I want to be able to save that to the device. However, that's not the case in this situation, and I realized I have to use a feature of Android, and that's intense. I'm able to set up bundles where I could pass these events through screens on the Android app, and what I'm doing here currently is setting up an intent to move to next view and bundle up that chess game so that I could save it onto the storage. While also saving, I'm serializing the data so it's easily accessible. Right here, I'm going to be saving the game. And, oh, I actually ran into an error. Let me fix that real quick. Okay, finally, I'm going to be able to randomize some moves, actually play a game, end the game, and save it. And I'm able to save it and view it. However, I'm not able to preview this game. But... I finally was able to create something where I can randomize the moves, save it, end the game, rename it, and then actually preview this game. 
This previewing feature actually took a while to make. And the reason for that is I had to serialize multiple fields and have the pieces be saved and the captured pieces themselves so that I could actually record them for the user to preview. And now we have the final product, which is right here. So white makes a move, then we're gonna have black make a move. Now let's see what white has in store. Looks like he's moving his queen up pretty early in the game. Black's making a weird move right now, but it looks like white's actually going in for the mate. Let's see if black could maybe prevent that. Oh, no, he does not. So on move seven, we're able to have white checkmate and that is actually the scholar's mate. So let's see if that saves and if we're able to preview it. Looks like we are. Let's see if we're able to undo it. Looks like we are again. So thanks for watching and please like and subscribe for more.